Folks, John Cordisco back again. Another game from round four of the Guitar Masters Open 2015. The strongest open tournament ever in the history of chess. This is a wild, wild, wild game. Uh, before I start that, though, maybe some of you, you, my YouTube friends out there and subscribers can help me out. I keep getting a copyright notice on my channel. And we had a clip on the copyright notice says no videos found. Can anybody have any idea what that means? I've been trying to find out. Anyway, this is between Christensen as white and Brominger as black. It's going to be a ready, I'll tell you, this is probably the wildest game so far that I've seen, maybe even this year, but definitely this tournament. It's going to be a ready, let's get to it. It gets weird right off the bat, you'll see. Now, that's B4. That's the last book move, folks. Here we go. G5. <laughs> Bishop. Bishop. Knight takes. E5. All right. This looks like no game I've ever seen, but let's go through. Knight E4. Good spot for that knight. Black decides, hey, what the hell? Let's chase the knight some more. Let's make it a weird... El Yekin's defense. Knight G3. Black develops. D3. White's thinking, okay. Let's just close this down right now. H5. <laughs> H4. Of course, you know the knight's got to go to G4. And unfortunately, you can't go F3 because Knight will go to E3. Believe it or not, it's just a tiny advantage for White. <laughs> or now it's a tiny advantage for Black. We'll call it even. Knight D2. E4. Here he comes. <laughs> D takes. And then he goes F4. Now, this is crazy crap. Okay? But it's fun. And here we are. About a point, point and a quarter advantage for White. He's two pawns up, by the way. And he's only barely over a point in score. Knight f5. He's trying to get something going. The bishop takes. Pawn takes. Knight c6. Finally, Black develops a piece. Maybe knight e4. At least pretend to try to get castled. Nope, instead he goes b5. Knight comes over. Queen to c2. Now, honestly and truly, I'm not trying to put Black down. I guess Brownberger, he's got to be 2,600 anyway. Guy's a great player. Way better than me. How can you screw this up as Black? I mean, for real. He goes C6. And just like that, went from a tiny advantage for white, for black. Look what happens. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight B3. Now, white is untangled. He's two full pawns up. Not looking too bad. And look at black's pawns. What a disaster. Out of the five of them, three of them are isolated. Interesting, though, might have been Rook to B1 instead. Then after Castles, Bishop A3, Rook E8. That would have been nearly as much fun. Now, see, so you can make hide no hair of this. C5. All right, he's going to solidify his pawns there. Makes sense. Bishop A3 going after the backward pawn. 
finally black castles and gives up another pawn apparently he doesn't care so now now the trick is let's see if white can get all eight of black's pawns <laughs> rook c8 bishop takes the rook rook takes the pawn queen to d2 Bishop takes f8. Now here we are. You got a rook and two pawns for a knight. Granted, there's some pieces coming in on you, and it looks a little scary. What do you do? The threat, as you can see, is here. How do you stop that threat? And I don't know why he did this. Maybe he just got spooked. He saw that this pawn can't take because it's pinned against the queen. He goes e3. And just like that, folks, let's go back here. It's less than a pawn advantage for white. And he's got a rook and two pawns for a knight. And just like that, it's almost a four and a half point advantage for black. a3 was the move, I think. Then bishop b7, give you a continuation. Now it starts getting a little bit more normal. Now it's more of a game. That king's kind of stuck there, but it's better than it was. After e3, d3. Look at this. Wow, wow. And then he finally goes a3. Figured, okay, I'm going to stop the threat to secure against the queen and the king. Rook to c1, computer line, and after bishop, rook takes, bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, pawn takes. It's a queen for a rook, a bishop, and two pawns, but it's over. Let's go back to a3 in the game. Pawn takes, pawn takes, rook to c2. <laughs> what to do what to do let's see where am I going to put the queen let's try d1 I know that but the computer is praying for a miracle rook to h3 and after rook takes knight takes but he still he can't hope to survive after queen of d1 knight takes now the queen gets out queen takes h5 d2 check King to f2. Wait, it gets better. Queen. <laughs> Look at this. Look at these attacking pieces. One, two, three, four. I'll even count the bishop because they can come up here and the queen can come here. All six of Black's pieces are in on the attack. Bishop b2. I mean, black spoiled for choice here. Puts the g knight check. Remember, his extra queen he just promoted is hanging here. <laughs> King g3. Give you an idea. Queen takes wouldn't really help much because after knight takes, King g3, it's still a disaster. After king to g3, queen on 8 to d3, because you got to be specific which queen. And that's where white finally resigned. Give you an idea. He sacrifices his queen. Bishop takes, queen takes, king f4, and queen e3 mate. That's the continuation. Holy crap. That was a fun game. I went through a little quick, but if you want to go through a little slower, just to get some enjoyment out of it. Oh, well, that's the way it is sometimes. These games are fun to watch and fun to go over, but they're a disaster to play in, especially if you're on the receiving end of the of the loss. Anyway, folks, I thought that was a fun, wild game from round four. We don't see many of these at this level, and I thought you'd enjoy it. Anyway, I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. 
Take care, folks. Bye-bye.